Welcome Franklin County residents and thank you for tuning in to the candidate forum for Franklin County Magistrate District 3 Democratic primary election held May 17th, 2022. I'm JC Young and I'm honored to serve on the Chamber Governmental Affairs Committee and your MC for this event. The office of County Magistrate is difficult to define. The men and women who serve in these roles wear a plethora of hats. They're expected to be economists, meteorologists, architects, attorneys, agriculturalists, public figures, and the list goes on seemingly forever. As you know, the primary obligation of a county magistrate is to serve on fiscal courts, and fiscal courts in Kentucky hold an immense amount of responsibility. Amongst many other duties, fiscal courts have the authority to enact ordinances, issue regulations, levy permissible taxes for the purpose of statutory obligations, appropriate funds for county roads, provide for the incarceration of prisoners, fund and hold elections, and oversee operations in the county for many public functions. The office that you're seeking was created in the original 1792 Kentucky Constitution, and it's worthy of candidates such as yourself. In this candidate forum for third district magistrate, we're honored to have Miss Kelly Dykus and Mr. Bo Sutherland. Before we begin, I would like to thank and recognize the Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce, the Frankfurt Plant Board, and our historic newspaper, The State Journal. Serving as our esteemed panelists and moderators and those doing the real work at this function are Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Tish Shade, Chair of Chamber Governmental Affairs Committee and Frankfurt Plant Board Communications Director Kathy Lindsay, and Editor of the State Journal Chanda Vino. Candidates, you'll have two minutes for opening remarks, one minute responses to questions with 30 second follow ups if asked by a panelist. Uh, we have a timekeeper, uh, and I would ask the candidates to be respectful of this process and pay attention to the time allowed. We had a draw prior to the forum, and opening remarks begin with Mr. Sutherland. Two minutes. Thank you. First off, thank the Frank Plant Board Chamber and the State Journal for taking your time to give us the opportunity to get our message out. Uh, my name is James Bo Sutherland. Everybody knows me as Bo. Um, I've lived in the third district now for 27 years. Um, born and raised here in Franklin County, went to just about all the schools here in Franklin County as they were being built back then. Um, started out in Ball Knob, went to Hearn, went to Old Elkhorn, back to um, Hearn to finish while they get got new Elkhorn built. Um, my love is for this county. It's for the third district. I have a business in the third district, have been for since 1987. Um, my parents bought it in 87 and um, we bought it from them in 2011. Since then I've lost my parents, so we're the heirs. Um, but um, I'm here to make sure, I want Franklin County to me, as long as I've lived here, hasn't changed all that much. Um, we have a um, problem of implementing things and kicking the can down the road, and I, I want to speed things up. Thank you. Ms. Dykus, two minutes, opening remarks. Again, thank you guys so much. Um, my name is Kelly Dykus. I am a mental health counselor here in Frankfurt. I've done lots of other things, mostly with nonprofits. Um, and I've lived in Frankfurt for, I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, um, but I've lived here since I was about 15. I remember actually when I got my driver's license, I drove downtown the wrong way on a one way. <laughs> it's like my very first memory of moving to Frankfurt. Um, but I went to Western Hills High School um, and then I went on to um, Midway College and Murray State and then I got my graduate degree at um, Eastern Kentucky University. So um, I've done lots of things and I, f I felt like it would be helpful, hopefully, to the fiscal court to have someone with my kind of background. Um, I don't think we've had a lot of those. I think we have a lot of business people and that's wonderful and we need that. Um, but I think we have a problem like every city in the state um, with drug and alcohol use and mental health issues and um, that's my expertise. So 
I was asked to run for that reason and uh, finally decided to do that. So thank you again for having me. Our first question comes from Chandavino and it's gonna be directed to Ms. Dykus. You have one minute to respond. Thank you all for coming. Do you think it's time to revisit the issue of merged form of city county government? And what benefits and drawbacks do you see to a merged government? Okay, I'm going to be really brutally honest. That <clears throat> doesn't mean a lot to me. I don't much, I, I, I see both sides of it, always have. Um, I think that there are reasons to merge. I think we can probably save money. I think that we can streamline things. That's great. Um, my parents own a farm out in Schweitzer, and they don't love the idea because they feel like they feel like their needs would not be met as well if they if we did that so I, I know that sounds like I'm, I'm skirting it but I really do see both sides of that um, I think if even if we don't merge we definitely need better communication um, so that we can do some things together and save some money Mr. Sutherland one minute I'm um, I'm in the middle um, I'm not for or against um, there's a lot of things out there that a lot of cost up front to merge a government. Um, and then you got to take into consideration, like I was telling Kathy during our um, meet then, that, um, you know, you got, you got a city fire chief and you've got a county fire chief who becomes the head fire chief who loses their job. So we're not only talking about merger, we're talking about families. Um, you know, until I can get, till somebody can put in front of me, tell me what it's going to cost and what we're going to save, you know, I'm, I'm border. Okay, I have a follow-up to that, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, many of the efforts of the city and county offices are redundant. Like developers and builders are frustrated going between offices and adjusting to different rules. The Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Adjustments are joint city-county. The county inspectors are assisting the, the city. Do you support a joint city, county planning and zoning office? 30 seconds, Ms. Dykes. I, I actually do. I think that's one of those times when merging makes a lot of sense. I think it's very confusing for people. Um, I did real estate for a while in, in Frankfurt and man, uh, my husband does construction here, he builds houses. So I've seen all of that. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of those places where it absolutely makes sense to merge some things. I agree. I mean, we already share so many other services. Why not share um, joint planning and zoning? Um, it, to me, it makes sense. Our next question comes from Kathy Lindsay. It's going to be directed to Mr. Sutherland. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Um, what are three achievable goals that you would champion in your term if elected? Um, Lakeview Park. Um, make sure that the sheriff's department and the firefighters and the county employees are paid according to what's based around other counties. And um, I want to look into our the amulets um, thing. I'm not sure. Four years ago, um, when I looked into it, at that time, I felt like we didn't have enough amulets in service because the city services a county so um number one for me of course because i'm a mental health professional is um the problem of addiction and the problem of mental health and i think that we need some programs um, in place to to do better i think that um, there are lots of people out there that need help and they're not getting the help they need um, I know, I'm sure you guys will be asking about the, the situation out on Johnson Road, but um, I, we need, I think we need a rehab facility in Franklin County somewhere. Um, we need to be able to do that here at home. I think that, uh, and the thing that makes me most excited, I think, when I come and talk to you guys is that I think we need to focus a little bit on what we want Frankfurt to be. What do we want Frankfort and Franklin County to be? How do we want to identify ourselves? How do we want to put ourselves out there? Um, and I've got some ideas about that. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and I just lost my third one. 
What was it? I get too excited about things and then I just move on. Okay. <laughs> Our next question comes from Tish Shea. It's going to be directed to you, Ms. Dacus. Right. Okay. What is your vision for improving the business climate in Franklin County and how can we become more competitive with our surrounding communities? That's my favorite question. So, okay, so when I think about Franklin County, Frankfurt, downtown Frankfurt, um, I think about the fact that we have so many things going on here. We have art, we have music, we have bourbon, of course, we have all of those things. And I think that we don't always do a great job of getting the information out there. I think if somebody comes here to watch a concert um, on the old Capitol lawn, they need to be able to know about the other things that they can do while they're here so they'll stay here. Um, so I have, I have some ideas about what that might look like. One of those things is identifying what, what we wanna be. What do we wanna call ourselves? How do we wanna be perceived um, and, and work on that? Tish, could you repeat the question? Of course. So what is your vision for improving the business climate in Franklin County and how can we be more competitive with our surrounding communities? Um, property tax. That's one of my pet peeves. I've spoke, I've been down to county government when they've been talking about raising them or keeping them the same. Um, we've got the highest property tax in any county around us. Um, you know, what's the point? I mean, it's it's hard to get families to move in here if they can live across the county line, you know, for a cheaper rate. Um, we can create all the jobs we want, but the whole theory behind cre creating jobs is to bring in more families, more revenue, more business friendly, um, you know, where people can go out and spend their money in the community. But we have to lower our property tax. Ms. Vino, this question will be directed to Mr. Sutherland. Great. Uh, the fiscal court is responsible for promoting economic development and to also preserve our unique historic natural resources. Without dancing around the question, yes or no, do you support Buffalo Trace warehouses locating in Peaks Mill? No. Do you want to explain your answer? Um, I'm a firm believer in Elkhorn Creek. It's been our livelihood for our business for years and years and years. I want to keep it protected. Um, and I think there's other places that they could go in this county other than out Peaks Mill. Ms. Dykus, one minute. Um, I also don't support it, although I'd like to have more information about it um, to give you a 100% answer. Um, I don't support it because I've heard from so many people about their fears um, and I think their fears are well founded at the same time we have to grow the community so it's a hard one that's not an easy one but at this point with what I know the information that I have I, I don't support it being there I hope that we have it somewhere just not there next question from Kathy Lindsay it's going to be directed to Ms. Dykus um, I want to know what differentiates you from your opponent a lot, I think. I think we come from very, very different backgrounds and we do very different things. Um, you know, I think I, because of my background, I think about people, I think about individuals, I think about groups of people, and I think about our culture. Um, and I care about those things. And I would like to see, um, I'd like to see us really work more with the people that live here and listen to them more than we do right now. Um, but I'm a therapist, so he's a business, it, they're just different. We're very different people, I think. Um, like she said, you know, she's a therapist. Um, I may talk to her about making some appointments after we get done. <laughs> um, um, but business sense, I'm more geared toward, I've got a certain area of terrorism um that i've dealt with you know pretty much most of my life um even when i was working for lrc um, as soon as i got off work i went out and helped my parents at the campground so i've been involved and in, even before lrc i worked for max allen at the first motel he bought when he came here um i was always involved in tourism so you know i mean bringing business in and people in is what i you know what i think I can do. 
Next question from Tish Shade is going to be directed to you, Mr. Sutherland. Okay. What does smart growth mean to you, and how would you address the need to infill within our community? Smart growth to me can be labeled to anything in growth in general, as long as you do it the smart way. Um, we do have problems with empty buildings in this town, and like I've told Kathy before during the meet and greet, um, I think there ought to be some zoning changes that um, if a building comes open at a certain period and it stays vacant for so long, there ought, there ought to be consequences for that. Um, now, what are those consequences? I don't know what you can do legally, but, you know, that would have to be figured out, you know, in planning and zoning. But there needs to be something done because an, a, 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 a business is not going to come in and, and take a, over a building that's been vacant for 20 years. And, um, you know, they, they're going to want to tear it down, but they don't want the cost to tear it down. And, of course, the owner's not going to tear it down, so it sits empty. Ms. Dikas, one minute. I the, the one thing I remember driving through E-Town a few years ago and everything was closed it looked like a ghost town that makes me crazy um, I don't see any reason for that um, smart growth to me means especially for Franklin County we need to keep our green space as much as we can because it brings people in our waterways bring people in we use those things it helps us it helps bring in funds um, in business but I I also think that there we have so many buildings open I, I just was at this old Sears building yesterday and every time I look at it I think oh the things I could do with that building I mean there's just too many there's too many and there needs to be consequences for that owners need they, they should not be allowed to just leave them open like that and then build something new that that just doesn't make any sense our next question comes from Chanda Vino. It's going to be directed to you, Ms. Dykus. Are you in support of the current Lakeview Park plan? And how do you think the Lakeview Park upgrades should be paid for specifically? You have one minute. That one's really easy for me. No. <laughs> no, I don't support it the way that it is right now. The building's too large. I think it's just, it's enormous. Um, I'm not, I have not seen anything that proves to me that we can bring in the money that they say we, we will. Um, my kids play ball. They're all telling me, like, we're not coming here to do tournaments. We're going to go to Lexington, Louisville, and Northern Kentucky. That's what we're going to do. There's more hotels. There's more, there's more of everything. Um, the other reason is because I'm a grandmother, and I use that park all the time. Um, my friends use that park with their grandkids all the time. And it's just, we're not going to be able to do that on the weekend, it sounds like. And I, I would prefer to keep it, I'd like to see some changes for sure, but not the changes that they're talking about. Mr. Sutherland, one minute. I'm all for um, providing the funding. We can get, you know, the right kind of funding. Um, I think if we expand it and, and do like what the um, professionals have done the, the plan, I see endless um, economic opportunities because we it, maybe we don't have enough hotels now, but down the road, once you know you get four or five or eight soccer teams in here with eleven families and they're struggling to find a place to live, somebody's going to build more motels. It's happened down at E Town, and the way I would fund it, there's issues in this is with the, um, the tourism tax. Uh, there was a comment made where there's only three hotels in the county. We have to um, talk with the city and do a joint tax on all hotels, is what I believe, in tourism, because we split, we already split occupational tax out, you know, at Parkside Drive, so why not, we could work that out. Next question from Kathy Lindsay is gonna be directed to you, Mr. Sutherland. Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, both of you would be new members of the fiscal court if you were um, elected. How do you view your role as far as uh, balancing the needs of your district versus the needs of the entire county? That's a good question. Um, well, naturally, the people in the third district is, is going to vote, you know, one of us in. Um, so we, we have to listen to their concerns. 
Um, but there's going to be some tough decisions that's going to have to be made. Now, for me, um, I'm a common sense guy. If it makes sense to me, I'm going to vote yay or nay, um, you know, on any decision. I mean, I'm a pretty common sense guy, and I believe in, you know, common sense. I mean, there's so many things. Everybody takes 20 minutes to explain an answer or to a question, and the common sense is right there. You can done, you could have saved 19 minutes. <laughs> can you ask the question again? Uh -huh. Uh, if elected, how would you uh, balance out the needs when making decisions? How would you balance out the needs of your district versus the needs of the entire county? So I think, I mean, you know, if, if I'm voted in, I'm, I'm the representative for my district. And so um, that doesn't seem very difficult to me. I think, you know, you take what your district wants and needs and you take it to the court and, and you know, try to figure out what's best for the entire community, knowing that each each district may be different. They might want something different. Um, I think to have a really great fiscal court, people need to be able to communicate. And I think if we can get some people in that will communicate, I don't think that'll be a problem. But I will be the voice for my district. That's what I'm here to do. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Next question from Tish Shea. It's gonna be directed to you, Ms. Dacus. Okay. As a member of the fiscal court, how will you handle requests for funding and what are your priorities for investments in our community? So one of the things I used to do is I ran a very large statewide AmeriCorps program. And so um, I'm very well versed with grants. <laughs> um, and so what we always did is score the grants. And I think that's exactly what has to happen. I always looked at outcomes. If you can show me this is going to end up here and we're going to have a good outcome, then we'll think about the funding. If you can't do that, and I don't think that always happens, um, I think we, we pick and choose favorites sometimes, you know, and, and say, well, we're gonna give them this and then they're gonna do this, and then that doesn't happen. So I think we have to look at history with the, the various agencies and the various nonprofits in town and see what the actual outcomes look like. Repeat it again. <laughs> As a member of the fiscal court, how will you handle requests for funding and what are your priorities for investments in our community? A uh, request for fundings would be, I, I believe, as a, on a needed basis from top to bottom. Um, now, what are those bases? I mean, for me, it'd be like, um, just for instance, um, the Franklin County Senior Citizen Center, the Sunshine Center, um, places that's gonna help those that need help. Um, the funding would be like um, Ms. Dyke said, um, grants, um, um, you know, just different places where, where, where we could get that pool of money. Um, I'm a firm believer in getting somebody, you know, get, up, get all these um, people that are a lot smarter than us when it comes to, you know, finding extra money and putting, Put, setting them down and let's figure out how we can get new money into this county other than the, the typical ways. Because I'm sure there's a lot more ideals out there than what I have and, or anybody else on physical court has. We just need to ask. Last question is going to be from Chanda Vino. It's going to be directed to you, Mr. Sutherland. One minute responses. Um, as you know, being the capital city, a lot of decisions come down to development versus preservation. Which do you think is more important to our community, and how would you help find the balance? That's a tough one. Um, business would take priority, but at the same time, you have to preserve what you have. Prime example, Peaks Mill. Um, you know, there has to be other places that can um, accommodate before you just decide you want to go somewhere. Um, there needs to be more um, infill. Look and see what you have on the in, you know on the inside that's already been zoned and ready to go, and and go that route. Um, but I'm a firm believer in preserving our natural resources. Firm believer. So I think our natural resources is what can bring money into Frankfurt. <laughs> That's my belief. I know, I mean, we need to grow business. There's no doubt about that. We need to figure out what kind of business we want to grow, though. 
Um, I think we have a plethora of land and water and beauty, and I think it brings a lot of people into Frankfurt. Um, so I, I don't know that there's, again, I think you need to look at outcomes. You need to look at what something's gonna cost and then what it's gonna give back to us. And if it's not worth it, don't waste our natural resources. You know, we, we need the green space, we need the water, we need all of those things to be healthy, to be the community that we are. So I think we have to really look at those things, you know, and, and see what's gonna make the most difference and what, what's really going to um, build Frankfurt in the way that we want to see it built. We've come now time for our closing remarks. Uh, Ms. Dykus, we're gonna start with you. These are final words, one minute for your closing, closing statement. Um, well, again, thank you all so much for having us. I appreciate it. And um, I, I guess what I would say is that I think that I have a unique set of skills that fiscal court may not have currently. Um, I, I'm running because I want to see things change and I want to hear from the community. I want to know what people want. Um, and I'm willing to keep my ears open and listen. And I'm also willing to do the homework that it takes to figure out um, how we're gonna spend money and how we're gonna bring, bring business in and all of those things. And I'll end with, I'm not a politician, clearly. <laughs> I'm an advocate, that's what I am. And I'd like to advocate for my district and I'd like to advocate for Franklin County business. Well, thank you. Mr. Sutherland, one minute closing remarks. I think uh, Ms. Dyke has hit a, hit a nail on the head when she said we're not politicians. I'm not a politician. She's not a politician. Um, we're here because we love the county and we love our district. Um, if we didn't, we wouldn't be here. Um, she has her ideas. I have mine. That's what makes elections so fun. Um, I just ask for the people in the 3rd District for your vote on May the 17th. As we close, I would per like to personally thank both of you for seeking this office. You've put your name on the ballot. You spent your own time and money. You have skipped out on family events to serve your community, and I want you to know that it's appreciated. You've done a great job in this forum, and I wish you the very best in this election. I would like to take this opportunity opportunity to remind everyone of the election date, which is May 17th, 2022. There have been some election law changes statewide since the COVID pandemic. And if you don't know where or how to vote, please call the county clerk's office, Franklin County Clerk's Office at 502-875-8702, or check out their website. It's loaded with current election information. Voting is a right in this country provided by our Constitution, and I sincerely hope and that you honor those that have served and that those that are currently serving and exercise your right. It's been my privilege to serve as the MC for this event. I'd like to thank all the folks that aren't on camera for your work uh, to make this possible. I'd like to thank the FPB, Frankfurt Plant Board, the staff here at the, at the FPB, uh, all the IT workers, chamber, chamber staff, and our, and, our, and our beautiful newspaper, the State Journal. That concludes this forum, and I thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.